Hello, hello, hello. So I am going to now uh, recreate this album um, for the uh, Art by Marlene um, stencil advent calendar. And um, it's wet on the front because I've been painting it. It's been a long painting process. Uh, but I just want to uh, show you how I put this together. So the first thing I did was created the um, actual cardboard sides. So I have so, uh, two uh, back and a front and a spine is what I started with. And I can't remember the measurements, so we're going to be doing this together. So I think I had four and a half by four and a half, and it becomes a little bit bigger when you wrap the paper over it. So four and a half by four and a half, and yeah, that looks like what I did. So two pieces of four and a half by four and a half, and I don't know what this is, so let's check. That's four and a half by four and a half. Perfect. So this one is good to go. And now I'm just going to trim this one. These are just bits and pieces of different cards. Um, heavyweight, uh, what do you call it? Mm. Um, 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 um. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the type of board it is, but it's, uh, it's intended for this purpose. So the first thing I'm going to do first, let's see if we have four and a half here. So we're going to have to take it out of this section, and I think that I can kind of trim it down right at this notch here. And you just go slowly. All right, so now let's do our four and a half down. Actually, we'll do our four and a half wide first. And that will give us a fair amount that we can use on other projects. There we go. Okay, so it's shifting slightly to the left hand side, and that's the nature of the die cutting or the trimmer. So I am going to line it at the bottom so that shifting down into the left won't happen because I'm supporting it with the, the ridge on my cutter. So there we go, we have a couple of pieces. And four and a half. There we go. Yeah. Now I don't worry too much about how ratty the edge is because I'm covering this with paper anyway. So we, we have our two four and a halves. Now we need our spine. And our spine is one and a half inches. Alrighty. So let's see what we can find. One and a half inches by four and a half inches. I think I might be getting it out of this. Again, that's one and a half inches. Yeah, easy. By four and a half inches. I might be able to actually pull it out of something else. Oh, just shy. And that's not going to be big enough. What do I have here? Because this piece I can cut off and have a fairly decent piece. This one as well. This, well, this one too. Hmm. <laughs> But none of them are four and a half, are they? So four and a half. Nope. That's not four and a half. Oh, four and a half. Okay. So we'll have to cut it from one of these. So we're going to one and a half. No, that's one and a quarter, Chris. Make sure you measure twice. One and a half. There we go. Still got a piece left on that. And four and a half. There we go. This I'm going to dump because 
I, it's too small for me to keep in my collection. Whoops, that goes over there. And let's put the cutter away for a moment. Now, the other thing I had for this, I'm just going to move all my pieces aside. And I like to just clip them together. Try to kind of keep them in uh, a size range so that I can clip them at the bottom. And I just put them in my shelving unit and I have them handy if I need to um, put a photograph on a distressed um, mixed media element. I usually like to put my photographs mounted on this stuff, either single or double, so I keep little remnants for those kinds of projects. Now, all right, so what we have is I have these um, paintable uh, outlined um, pieces that I put together and wrapped around the um, it's a bit of a trim wrapped around the other so it was something like this with a little bit of a about a three sixteenths of an inch in between so the first thing though is I have to make sure that I can I'm gonna have this on the top and I'm gonna have that on the bottom and I want to make sure that the paper is gonna stay together there we go all right so now I get some of my washi tape I think that's what I used doesn't really matter because I cover it over again anyway So I'm going to get some of this washi and I'm just going to stick the washi down to hold the two pieces of paper together. <laughs> if I can prevent it from sticking on itself. Here, I can stick on my skin. There we go. And I want to try and make sure that it goes one piece all the way as close to the top as possible. Perfect. Not worried about it if it uh, ends in a little bit. And then I'm just going to trim off any excess that I have. There we go. All right, so there is my piece. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to have one piece over here, one piece over here. I'm just going to move this because it is wet. I don't want to get it on anything. And I'm going to have my piece down the center. So my center piece is the thing that's going to dictate where these guys end up. So I want to glue this down right away. And I'm just going to use um, Barely Art Precision Glue. And I'm literally just going along the edges right to those corners and scooching down. All right, now, I'm an eyeballer. If you need to measure, you can, but basically I'm just eyeballing halfway from left to right and centered from top to bottom. The paper gets folded over in the end anyway, and any white that shows I can fix. All right, so there we go. And now I can align these pieces about 3 sixteenths of an inch from my center point. And I want to try and make sure that I can get it more or less centered on that piece. So we are going to do the same process, get into those corners first. Draw a line along the edge. So we have glue going right to the edge and then gluing randomly 
on the inside here. There we go. And again, I'm going to stand up for a minute. I'm going to eyeball and try to get this looking straight. There we go. And I got about 3 16 so I notice it's a little shorter up there than down there, but it's it won't be a problem when you put the whole thing together. And the same thing is going to happen here. You got that 3 16 centered. All right. In the corners. Along the edge. Making sure there's a good bead, but not too much, because you don't want to gush it out from underneath. And then, just going to stick my fingernails there. And I'm just throwing the glue on. Whoop, maybe a couple little spots there. All right, and now I'm going to try to do my... 13 sixteenths again, lining it up as much as I can, centered top to bottom and around the sides. And so there is the basics of my book. Now, <clears throat> everybody does the finishing differently. This is quite stiff card, so I'm actually going to cut diagonals. Um, to get this to fit together. So let me get my long scissors. So I'm literally just going to snip across that and across that corner, across that corner, and across that corner. Just getting those corners off. All right, and then I'm just going to manipulate the paper so that it follows the line of, there we go, the line of the cardboard pieces. And then I'm going to take some glue, get right to those edges. And I'm going to glue this right down and try to get it, especially where it's got tape on it. There we go. A little bit more out here. Just pull some of that glue up. There we go. And now I'm going to fold it over. And just hold it with my fingers for a second until it kind of adheres and then I'm going to flip it over and give it a nice rub. There we go. And then that'll be nice and stuck. I'm going to do the bottom in the same way so let's just kind of encourage the paper over and I see that my tape is giving way a little bit, which is fine, because it's going to get all hidden underneath anyway. There we go. All right. I'll glue this down, get those points, and along the edge there. And as close to the edge as possible over this joint, as close as possible. Oop. There we go. And we're just going to encourage the fold of this down onto the chipboard and flip it over and there we go rub it down all right 
and then we'll do this side. And there we are. Alrighty. So at this point, you can see that there's going to be corners showing on my edges. And I just go in with a marker and darken that up. And you don't see it in the final project at all. Just at the tips there. Some people like to fold their edges over on one side, but I, I think it's too bulky, personally. Okay, there we go. We're going to do pages, uh, we're going to do the little slots first before we finish that up. So this will have a natural bend in it. Um, I just try to make sure that it's sort of somewhat equal in where I bend it. There we go. So that you have this nice outer um, cover. Okay. Now, four and a half inches is can't remember what I measured these at. These ones were cut at four and three eighths inches. So the width of our our um, slot is going to be four and three eighths inches. So let me get that cut off of this. I like to use a guillotine for this because it's heavier paper. I said four and three eighths inches. There we go. So there's one piece. I know I'm going to need two, but we'll start with one. And I'm not going to have you sit through the whole process. But um, you'll see how it all works out in the end. All right, so there's my, oh, this is longer than my four eighths, right, <clears throat> which is fine. So I haven't cut the zip strip off. I've just left it there bigger because we're doing um, an accordion fold. It doesn't really matter. I just have to make sure that when I measure this end, I go right off the end appropriately. And we are measuring every half inch yes so we're doing half inches i have to keep looking back at my my <laughs> master um so there's a half inch so we're just going to keep going oh no but we don't do every half inch all right so this is going this first half inch is going to go under the paper that seals the front then it's going to go up to uh, the top of the first side of the pocket. So this is the top of the first side of the pocket. Then it's going to go down to the center of the pocket. And then it's going to go up the other side of the pocket to the top. And then it's going to go down the other side of the pocket. And then I need like, uh, I'm going to say, not even an eighth of an inch, but a small space between um, between one pocket and the next pocket, just so there's some breathing room. And when you open it, you can open it flat um, so it doesn't puff up. So what I tend to do, so here is my last, uh, the bottom of the second side. I'm just going to shift it so that the actual line fold line is on this barrier between this slot and that slot and that gives me about a sixteenth of an inch and that just gives me a little bit of space between 
pockets. I don't want, I don't need a lot of space. I just need a little space. Okay. So when this gets folded up, you'll see how it works out. So we end up having one, two, three, four, fo five folds, um, five half inch folds, and then a sixteenth of an inch fold. So the next trick is then to line up that sixteenth of an inch with an actual slot. So we can do the up to the top, down, right, I'm going to slip it into the half inch so I'm making sure I've got half inches, uh, up to the top, down to the bottom, back up to the, t whoops, back up to the top, and back down to the bottom of the other side, and then we're going to shift and do our sixteenth of an inch space. Okay. And I'm going to stay right there. And then make sure that's a nice line. And then we're going to go up a half inch, down a half inch on one side, up a half inch, down and a half inch on the other side. And we're going to shift this to make our sixteenth of an inch and then we go up half inch to the top down a half inch to the middle up a half inch on the other side and down a half inch on the back of that one and we are going to shift to get that sixteenth of an inch Oops, that looks very tiny. Give me a second. Let's get that nicely done. Okay. And so, again, lining that up. Half inch up, half inch down half inch up, half inch down, and then we're going to shift this just because we need to get this end piece done. So we're shifting and putting this line on the post between one of the markers. I just lined it up for seven because it's easier for me to do my half, in, half inches now. And so I'm going up and I'm going down and this is where I'm going to have to attach the second piece to make the pocket because we need more than what we have here. We have one, two, three, four, five pockets and we need to have 12 pockets. All right, and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So this is where we're going to need um, eighth inch washi tape and our little miniature um, stapler. And the stapler I just find uh, keeps it uh, super steady and secure. And let me just put my glue in here. All right, so the first piece is gonna fold up and you want to make sure your folds are nice and tight, okay? Then the next piece is going to fold the other way. And again, you're going to put your pressure on and make it nice and tight. So <clears throat> flipping it back to the right side. So this goes under the pa uh, paper that it adheres to the actual book. And now we're folding down into the first side of the first pocket. So we're going to flip this over and the whole time you want it to be very secure. Okay, so there is the first side of our first pocket. Now we're going to move to the top of the second side of the pocket. So we're going to flip that over, fold it down secure it 
flip it back over and now you can see the pocket is there and now we're going to finish but we're going to fold at that first little line to make sure that we are getting our half inch in there make sure on the back you can see that we've folded on the first line doing it nice and secure and now this is my pocket I need to fold this up to start our next uh, first side of the next pocket so it's a little tricky but you have to fold that and align it and make it a nice stiff fold and that what that does is it just gives you a little bit of play between the pockets you can see you have like a tiny bit of play between the pockets so this pocket is going to have where's my opening here so I'm just going to put a small bit of adhesive on the inside of this pocket on both sides okay and this is thin enough you can just tear it and then I'm going to lift that piece up on both sides and I'm going to align those pieces carefully so we have a bit of a pocket and it's a little bit puffy okay we have our space here but you noticed how this splays out so we have to also put some adhesive on both sides of the back and I use a half inch for that or just under a half inch for that and I put I want it to be close to the bottom because the bottom is where the stress point is so I just tear that off and on this side I'm putting it to that first little fold okay so it's not going over the folded part it's just going between where the pocket lives here and that first fold okay all right and now I can fold these two things together so now they are permanently stuck together and whoops let go oh boy okay I've lifted up a bit there so I'm just going to put a bit of glue because we do need to have it nice and secure on both sides there we go Ooh, there we go and then I push this up making sure the bottom of the pocket is lining up with that first first fold I don't want it to line up with the second fold because the second fold is the space between the two sides so there is our first pocket okay and it's been adhered so it it sits together in the bottom and now we're just going to take our stapler we're going to line up the staple holes with a sixteenth of an inch in and we're just going to staple it oh there we go all right staple just a sixteenth of an inch in and we do that on both sides all right and then just so nobody hurts themselves I take my plier my tweezers and I just push down on the back of the staple so that nobody gets their fingers caught in a staple okay so what I'm going to do I just wanted to show you that so you understand what's going on and now if we take our little calendar it fits right in there okay without any adhesive which makes it easy to pull out in and out as you need it all right so I'm going to fold all these lines first 
and then I'll come back and repeat the process so you understand this pocket really closely. So we have folded over our little quarter inch piece and you can tell the difference or our 16th inch piece because this one is in a V and that one is more in a U shaped. Okay. So now this we have to fold forward and we're always checking to make sure that it aligns and this one we fold backward and we're just going to give that a good rub on this side and a good rub on that side and you should see some space there because that's our sixteenth of an inch that we left okay so that's one side of the next pocket and then I'm going to fold it over again. Sorry, let me get my fingers going here. All right, down to that first line. So we want to make sure that we are folding on that first line. And sometimes you have to manipulate it just a little bit to make sure it's equal on both sides. There we go lining up the sides of the paper and then making that nice firm fold and this one has to be firmly folded as well there we go so now we have our second pocket done okay All right, so this is where we're going to join on to our second uh, piece. So I need to put tape here and here. Let that down. So now, when I pop these two together, they're going to line up perfectly, okay, with a little bit of buckle. So we have two pockets, but this one is floppy, so we have to flip over, and on either side of the pocket, we have to tape it down with the larger tape. So we'll do one side right up to that first um, fold line and this one will do right up to the first fold line as well and so you can see I've left that space that's our our space for our fold and now we're just gonna get the seal off and I'm going to line it up with that line on both sides. So we continue to keep that space. So now we have a, a thin space, which is our fold. And that is the space between the two pieces. And then this one, we're going to line up with the edge making sure that we have our extra space there. So we have our extra fold line there and the other side has been lined up. All right. So with all intents and purposes, we now have two folds. I'm going to go in again, line up my and make sure you're always going in the same direction with your staple because you want to be able to go in afterwards and have it all look like from front to back properly. And this, oops, see I almost did it wrong. There we 
There we go. Moving on, so that's up. There we go. Okay. So now we have one, two, three, four folds. Just going to staple this. And my flattening routine on both sides so I don't stick myself with a staple. There we go. So we have four, five pockets. One, two, three, four, five pockets. Now we need 12. So we're going to have to do this all over again with another piece. That is four and a half inches and I'm using uh, 80 pound cardstock um, because I find it's a better option it, it's more durable so we're going in and we're doing four and a half inches wide and I'm not bothering to take off the um, no four and three eighth inches wide pardon me let me just double check that four and three eighth inches wide Woo! good thing I double checked that All right, there we go. Because we might as well use up this paper in our in our mouth. All righty, so get our scoreboard out again, and so I'm going to repeat to you what we do with the scoring. So starting in the bottom, we scored. Um, okay, now we have to figure out what's going on from here. So I have one side, but I need the up and down of another side. So I'm going to score at half an inch, which is the up, and one inch, which is the down. And then I'm going to shift it so I get my sixteenth of an inch in there. Okay, so technically what's going to happen is that piece is going to adhere to the the end piece this is going to fold this piece is going to fold up to be one side of the pocket and that's going to be the other side of the pocket and there's my spacing okay so just a little little bit tricky but nothing you can't handle all right and now i can do my up one side, down one side, up the other side, down the other side, shift, and get my little sixteenth of an inch, and then up one side, down one side, up the other side, down the other side, shift, get my sixteenth of an inch,
the side and a tiny little bit to go down. So we're going to attach our next piece onto that part. So we have to remember that this side is going to attach to, let me get some things moved out of the way. This side is going to attach to the remnant of this side. So I'm going to fold this. This is going up and this is going down into that double crease. So I'm going to fold. I'm going to fold on that first crease just to make my life a little bit easier because it's close to the end of the paper there. All right, and then I can fold this one up. So this is my second side that is going to attach there. Okay, and I'm going to fold my little secondary fold. Make sure I get it nice and even. There we go. Okay, so now I have my little fold there. And now I'm up one side again, down one side again. And I need to go up one, the other side and down to the first fold. Let's make sure I that left fold line, yep. Okay, so now we're going to attach this piece that's left over. So here's the front with a half inch, and then here's one side of a full of a pocket with a little piece that would be the other side. So we are going to stick these two pieces together. Okay. And I am going to do it with a half inch piece and with an eighth of an inch piece because I want it to be very secure. Because wherever you have something overlapping something else is where you can end up having some trouble. So I have my... Hmm, where is the beginning? There it is. So I'm just making sure I am completely stuck. No gaps. All right. So now this is going to sit on top of this end piece. So we're just going to stick that right into the center. And just push it out on our way out. And I'm noticing that it's not quite aligned. So I have to adjust it to make sure it is aligned, which means now I have to use glue. And this happens, you know, sometimes you're lucky and you get it work. So now I need to shift it slightly. There we go. All right. Now I'm noticing, I'll just hold it for a second. I'm noticing that my second piece is slightly larger than my first piece. I'm not going to do anything about it now. I'll trim it when everything is put together. Um, because otherwise uh, I could, you know, trim it in a um, strange way and it wouldn't be even. So now we have our pieces stuck together. So we have an up on this side. And as you can see, this now is going to get hidden in our fold and a down on the other side. 
There we go. So we're going to put our little pieces of tape there. So here's one piece of tape and another piece of tape. off there we go and there we go and now we're going to align the pocket tops together A little stiffer because you have that extra paper. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to put the backing on so it sticks down properly. And this is just going to stick on that side and on that side. We've left a little space for our, our lip here. And and here we go. And so now we're going to do this side. of the underside of the pockets. And I'm not putting glue on the hangover because it's too, uh, I don't want it to stick to that piece because I'm gonna trim that edge off. There we go, and we're ready to finish the rest. Let's just take a piece of paper that's the right size. That is the way to go. Instead of making it so difficult. Alright, so this is four and three eighths. I'm just going to cut that straight down. And then we're going to cut it off where we can. So our first we're going to have a down. start with it down on the first side. So we're going to go down and then we have to come up the other side and then down again and then we shift and we have our little space and then we go up on one side, down on one side, up on the other side, down on the other side, and then we have a half inch which is supposed to go under the paper. All right, with any luck, we'll have done this right, or I'll have done this right. So that is an up and then this is an up and a down to our first point. There we go, to our first line of the two. And then we have to fold the second line of the two. And that gives us one pocket. And then we go up, down, up, down, and that'll give us our second pocket that we need and then I just cut along this line. Perfect! So let's just double check that I got it all right. So I'm going to stick that in there like it's supposed to be. Okay, so we have one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ha <laughs> ha! Good thing I checked. I need one more. Okay, I'm not going to cut anything off just in case because I am not feeling confident today. So I'm going to get my adhesive on here. And normally I would tuck this underneath, but because it has, um, or I tuck it over top, but because it has the um, add spot, exposed on the top side. I'm going to stick it under so we don't have to look at that. Okay, and I'm having trouble with pulling off the tabs today. Just give it a second. So there we go. So this should go here. I'm trying to get that as close to perfect as possible. Let's keep going just in case. So we have attached so that's one and then this is going to be two okay so let's stick that together now so I don't get any more confused This has become a pocket. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Awesome. I'm going to count it again, but first let's get this attached. I don't know why, when I was just doing it out of my brain, it was, um, it was much easier. But with, okay, so that goes there, and that goes there, and then, goes here, leaving some space. over here and then this goes down here and that should be it but once we get it all stuck together we will double check again because you don't want to be one short There we go. Let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12. Yep, we need one more, so I'm glad I did that. There. All right. Let's get that cut done. Well, it's easy. There we go. Okay. That was a challenge. But that's what happens sometimes, right? Sometimes you just got to keep... Keep... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Keep... Pushing on until you get it right. that line and if we did it right we should have 13 pockets so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's ten there While I'm here, 11, 12, and 13. Yay! There we go. And there is our spine that our pockets will fit into. All done. Okay, so now, now that we have the spine done, We can put it into the book. Where's the book? Alrighty. So our spine is going to sit in our book, centered in our book. So I'm going to just tape this down so I can make sure that I, I'm going to put a line where I think center is, out from each end. So when I glue this in, I will be more or less centered. Let's use a ruler and line that up a little more appropriately. There we go. Okay, so that gives me a sense of where center is, so I can see beyond. And when I put this down loosely, I can see about where center is. So, three, six, three, six, okay, so that one, so I'm going to glue it down like that, and it's going to be glued on those sides as well. Okay, so we need one inch tape. And I'm gonna put one inch tape, just leaving a sixteenth of an inch from the top. Now I don't think I did it this way when I first created the album. Um, but like I said, I just kind of winged it and, um, 
so I wouldn't have um, I just realized I've got too much tape there, but that's all right. Push that down on. And we're gonna just push that down on the fold area there. because we are going to have to put a fold in this paper once we get this stuck down. Taking this and this off. Loosely laying it in the center. There we go. Pressing down. There we go, and I'm just going to run some glue. This seems to have enough stick to it. This one not so much, so I'm just going to run some glue on this one. There we go, and the whole thing should fold up nicely, and there's your spine. And I do have some excess glue poking out of some of these. That's why you see some white on there. And you also see some of the staples, but that's all right. Okay. So then I need four by four pieces of paper, four and a, no, four and three eighths pieces of paper to cover up what's going on in here. So I'm going to cut this. So this is four and three eighths by four and three eighths. And I am going to spread glue along the edge here. Whatever doesn't um, get on the paper will be okay because it's clear glue so it'll dry clear and we'll just get some glue going in the center section there and we'll line this up centering it all three ways we go. And there's our one side. Look at how nice that is. Love it. And now we'll do the other side. The other side I don't have four and three eighths, so I am going to put two pieces together. Four and three eighths. Four and three eighths. Push the two pieces together. There we go. Trim off the excess. And then trim this down to four and three eighths. There we go. And then this piece will go in the back. All 
Alrighty. I'll take this. Oh, that didn't get trimmed off. There we go. And again, we're going to Put it down. Line it up. And there we go. Our little book. And there's our little book. Ta -da! With all our little pockets. And let's make sure our pockets fit randomly in there. There's one. Let's do another random one. There's two. Oh, that wasn't a pocket. Sorry. Oh, that one's a little tight. There's the two. There we go. And here's another one, just to try it out. There we go. They're snug. My staples are a little too far in on this. So I'm going to have to do some adjusting. So my staples are just a little too far in. It's no big deal. I just take it out and restaple it. But otherwise, it is done. And that's it. And then you can put your pockets in and color your surface. I'm going to use markers next time. And that is it, folks your little tiny box. And here's the original. I don't know how I managed to do the original so easily. And for some reason I had more difficulty with this one, but they're all the same, same boxes, the same books. All right, I forgot to do the spine. So we're just gonna put this on the spine. Okay, so this gets Lift it up and trim back. And same with this. Okay. And on the spine, we are going to put. I think I put an inch and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Inch and a half by jeep, 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 four and a half. Inch and a half by four and a half was the spine size. And I had paper, butterfly paper that I really liked. And I have a small cutter I'm going to use. And we're going to do an inch and a half by four. Hmm. Let me take that white off the top. I'm not really thrilled with that. Four and a half. There we go. And all I did is I did some watercolor effects on this one so that it was a combination of pinks to orange and green at the bottom there. And this has a, an interesting um, surface. You can see it there. So it has resist on it. So it looks really pretty when it's finished. And that is going to live on the spine, centered. Go into the corners.
There we go. Make sure you have the butterflies up. Make sure you have the side you want to see up. And you're just going to center it on the spine. Like so. There you go. Press it down. And there's your spine ready to be painted. All right, so that was longer than I expected it to be. I ran into a couple of trouble uh, problems because I didn't write anything down, so I was kind of winging it. Not really winging it, I had done it before, but uh, it wasn't as smooth as just straight out of my brain. So I apologize for that, but we got to the end regardless of that, and uh, we're ready to move on to day 13 to 24. See you later.